Hey YouTube, Joy Boy here. So, today guys, I have for you what I believe will become a meta theory. A theory that whether or not you hear on this channel right now from me, you will hear from someone else. And so guys, this video will relate to the next new Nakama. And I would not be talking about this right now if it were not for Dave of Or Jackson, who is a very well-known and respected forum theorist who first got me thinking about the general subject, and then Dritz who provided me with the final piece in order to sort of combine the thoughts and create this. So huge shout out to both of these people. And make sure to spam Dritz's chat telling him not to be a lazy bastard and just make the damn theory. But before we get into this video, I want to shout out my Discord again. So if you guys don't know, Discord is like a social media, essentially like Facebook or Twitter. It's its own thing. Many people prefer it over any of those other platforms. I have my own server where people who like One Piece or like my videos can all go and they can chat via voice or text. It's kind of like a game. It's just a really cool place to hang out. I drop by. You should join. Link, as always, will be in the description. And so, guys, let's begin. And I'm going to start off by saying something that I didn't say in my last Nakama-related video that I guess I should have, which is that Jimbei, in my mind, 100% is already a strat. The only thing that would prevent him from joining the strat crew would be his death, which I don't believe in. So, as far as the 10th strat, I give that title straight to Jimbei. And so if I ever talk about future Nakama, I'm starting with the 11th Straw Hat. And so when people are talking about the 11th Straw Hat, the next new Nakama aside from Jinbei, there's a lot of characters that people are considering. But it seems like the two candidates that people like the most would be either Pedro or Carrot. But how exactly do you choose one from the two? And I personally find it very difficult to, to do. And I think this theory fully explains this confusion. And so guys, let's start with Momonosuke. And just to get right to the chase, I do believe that there is some potential that Momonosuke joins the Straw Hat crew. But before you turn off this video, you rage, hear me out all the way to the end, because when we get to the end, it'll make a lot of sense. And guys, I think it's important to start off with a speculation that I've shared on my channel before that I strongly believe. That is that Momonosuke is Uranus. Straight up guys, the powers that Momonosuke revealed at the end of the Zoark are almost a carbon copy of the revealed powers of the ancient weapon, Poseidon. And this is actually one of the reasons why people don't like the idea. They think it's too similar to Shirahoshi for it to be another ancient weapon. But I think about it differently. I think that this is so similar to that power, then why not would it be considered a power of an ancient weapon? Straight up guys, we know that this power that Momonosuke has is in some way important. Ichiro Oda has singled out Momonosuke, and Momonosuke is specifically staying behind on Zo to learn more about this power. And we know of many characters that have displayed the ability to hear the voice of all things, and Momonosuke seems to be one of these people. But of all these people, Odin Kozuki, Goldie Roger, and Monkey D. Luffy, all of them were stated to be capable of hearing the voice of Zunisha, and none of them were capable of conversing with it. Momonosuke, on the other hand, does have this ability. It's worth pointing out that we never saw Gold D. Roger and Monkey D. Luffy converse with the Sea Kings. They both are just simply revealed to be able to hear them. However, we do know that Poseidon or Shirahoshi can do this. We also know that Zunisha was unable to defend herself without some sort of command. And the only person who could command it was Momonosuke. This is so similar to Poseidon and her ability to command the Sea Kings. We also know that Zunisha in the ancient past committed a crime, and because of this it was sentenced to walk for all eternity and to only act at the behest of an order till the end of time. And so guys, there was a person with a power in the distant past who had the ability to command Zunisha, issue commands that Zunisha could not break. And so guys, only one person was able to counteract this command that was given to Zunisha in the distant past, and that would be Momonosuke. Essentially, somebody in the past had the very same ability as Momonosuke. This is just the same as Shirahoshi, being essentially the reincarnation of the person with the powers of Poseidon. Somebody in the distant past had the very same powers as Shirahoshi. And you gotta know that this is in some way tied to the Void Century. Zunisha is over 1,000 years old. And we also know 
that Poseidon was able to issue commands to sea kings that lasted for very long periods of time because we can still see that sea kings surrounding Fishman Island were charged with the protection of the Noah and this was a charge that they seemingly could not break. Whereas somebody in the distant past ordered Zunisha to walk the world for all eternity and this was also an order that she could not break. And also I think it's curious that the, the Kozuki family was friendly with or part of the ancient kingdom and the ancient kingdom were the people that used the ancient weapons. And on top of this, if this power is passed down the Kozuki family tree, then we know for a fact that it skipped a generation because Odin Kozuki didn't have this ability. This is also exactly the same as Poseidon. The amount of similarities here is just absurd guys, straight up it's so absurd that I think you have to believe at this point in time that Momonosuke has an ancient weapon level ability. There's really only two differences between Poseidon and Momonosuke's ability right now as revealed, which is Momonosuke has an additional ability that we haven't seen from Poseidon in which he was able to somehow look through the look at the world through Zunisha's eyes. He could see Jack's ship through Zunisha's eyes. Uh, and then on the other side, Poseidon has the ability to command more than just one Sea King. He can command all of the Sea Kings, whereas Momonosuke has only been revealed so far to be able to command Zunisha. But you know that it's definitely possible that Poseidon has this ability that Momonosuke displayed in Z the Zoark, and Momonosuke may be able to command more creatures aside from Zunisha. It may not just be Zunisha. In fact, it would be absurd to think that it would just be Zunisha. Guys, their abilities are so similar that I, it's so easy to speculate that that it is essentially the same ability. I think the only difference that I would speculate is that Poseidon has the ability to command or control the Sea Kings, while Momonosuke may be able to command or control the Land Kings. But anyway guys, that's essentially the speculation for Momonosuke being Uranus, and given this, it would make a lot of sense for him to continue traveling with the Strats, because I think we can presume that by the time the final battle in One Piece occurs, Momonosuke would have to be there, as well as Shirahoshi. And so guys, as for Shirahoshi reuniting with Luffy, this is something that I believe has honestly been foreshadowed. It's basically been, there's a prophecy out there that Luffy will be the one to destroy Fishman Island. In order for Luffy to destroy Fishman Island, he would have to return to Fishman Island, where Shirahoshi is. So this could be the way in which Luffy collects Shirahoshi, and Shirahoshi continues with them to the end battle. It's also worth pointing out that if the Strides ever intend to go to Marijoie, then Fishman Island is just below there. So if the Strides go in that general direction, they will be very near Shirahoshi. And lastly guys, it's possible that Shirahoshi gets captured by someone because we know that Caribou knows that Shirahoshi is Poseidon because he eavesdropped and he will leak this information undoubtedly to someone and they will attempt to capture her, which again could be another way to reintroduce her. But when it comes to Momonosuke, after Wano is dealt with, Wano is saved, if Momonosuke just stays there, then what's the motivation? What, what will really keep him in the story? This is far more ambiguous. I think this lends credence to the idea that Momonosuke may find a way to continue traveling with him. But I think that Oda would need to justify this occurring as well. That just because he's Uranus and because he's necessary in the plot, right, that doesn't, that doesn't give the motivation to Momonosuke himself to continue traveling with the strats. So what could this be? And honestly, guys, I think it could be because the Kozuki family heritage is inexorably tied to the Poneglyphs. Momonosuke himself might be interested in finding the true history out for himself to learn what his ancestors did and what it is that they fought for. It's also possible that Momonosuke himself learns that he is Uranus and would like to know what that means and all the history relating to that ability, which again would necessitate him following uh, the Poneglyphs and learning about what happened during the Void Century. Or guys, it literally could be as simple as Odin Kozuki died protecting the true history, protecting the secrets of the world, and Momonosuke might want to follow in his footsteps and find these secrets out for himself to learn why it is that his father made the decisions that he did. And so guys, the last thing that I would need to justify is his actual role on the crew, his purpose for being there. Every Straw Hat has their dreams and aspirations and goals, 
Every single strat has their role to play on the crew. They have their purpose in every single arc, and Momonosuke straight up is seemingly useless, and he definitely cannot fight anyone. But I do think that I have a good speculation as for his role in the future arcs. As I have already speculated in this video, I believe that Momonosuke is Uranus. But I think it's worth speculating that the abilities of Poseidon and the abilities of Uranus seem very oddly similar to the ability to hear the voice of all creation. In fact, they seem like super overpowered versions of this. And we can actually see tiers of those who can hear the voice of all creation. If we speculate that Momo's ability and Poseidon's ability are the absolute epitome of the powers of hearing the voice of all creation, then they would be at the very top. I think below them would be someone like Roger or Odin Kozuki, and then below them someone like Luffy. It's worth pointing out that Roger had the ability to hear the voice of the Poneglyphs, and Luffy has yet to show this capability. And so if we speculate that Momo's ability is greater than Roger's, then Momo should also be able to hear the voice of the Poneglyphs. And honestly, I believe that this is something that has been foreshadowed within the story. Going back to the Zoark, as soon as Momonosuke arrived, he felt uneasy, he felt sick, and he was secluded in his room. It's something that at the time I knew was important, but it wasn't until near the end of the, the arc that Oda gave us the clue that we needed, which is that Momonosuke said this, The closer that I get to the whale tree, the louder the voice becomes. And guys, what exactly was inside the whale tree? Well, the road poneglyph. Now, of course, there's a certain amount of ambiguity because at the end of the arc, we can see that Momonosuke can hear the voice of Zunisha. So it's possible that he was hearing Zunisha all along. But Luffy also had the ability to hear Zunisha, but he wasn't hearing Zunisha at all up until the point that Zunisha was actually speaking. And unless Zunisha is just mumbling constantly, I don't think that Momo would feel sick or uneasy the entire time while being on Zo just from hearing Zunisha's voice. I think it's far more likely that a Poneglyph essentially being a historical tablet with some sort of voice that can be heard would be talking non-stop. This is something that to me makes far more sense to have made Momo uneasy ever since he arrived. And again, we've kind of already reasoned that at all points in time, Momonosuke's was compared to Goldie Roger. Goldie Roger could hear the voice of the Boneglyphs, so it would just make sense for Momo to have that very same ability. So honestly, I believe that Momo was hearing the voice of the Boneglyph, but it was upsetting him, it was disturbing him, and he wasn't focused on what exactly it was saying. He was trying his best to ignore it. So honestly, guys, I think Oda did a cover-up. I think he foreshadowed Momonosuke's ability to hear the Poneglyph and covered it up with Zunisha at the end of the arc. And the reason that he would have done this is because this ability in particular will become important uh, in the future of the story. And so there's many possibilities for the usefulness of such an ability. But I think all of it sort of centers around what this ability allows Momo to do, which currently the strats can't do. You ever wonder how Goldie Roger found so many Poneglyphs? I honestly think Momo gave us the clue as to how he was able to do this. Ever since Momo arrived on Zo, he felt uneasy. If you put two and two together with this uneasy feeling hearing this voice, then you would know that whenever you hear this, that a Poneglyph is nearby. And all you need do is go in the direction that the voice gets louder to find a Poneglyph. I honestly think that Goldie Roger found many Poneglyphs because of his ability to hear their voice. He's essentially acting like a dragon radar and can track it. And I think Momo could do the same. And so we have four road Poneglyphs. These Straw Hats need to find the location of one of them. One is in the possession of Kaido. They already have the copy of Big Moms and the copy of the Poneglyph on Zo. After Wano, I suspect that they will have Kaido's road Poneglyph. But how exactly are they going to find this last road Poneglyph? The impression that we get is that its location is unknown. No one knows where it is. So then, perhaps, Momonosuke's ability to hear the voice of the Poneglyphs will allow them the ability to find it when they arrive on the island in which it is hidden. There are not that many arcs left in One Piece. There are not that many islands left needing to be visited. So then, with the remaining arcs after Wano, such as Elbaf and perhaps the Emerald City, 
with, with the road Ponogryph likely to be located in one of these two places, Momo being the one to find it gives him a role for that arc. So guys, honestly, I believe this is everything that you would need to know in order to speculate that Momo will continue traveling with the strats. But you'll notice something interesting, which is that unlike in my pudding video, I haven't really argued for Momo as an actual member of the strat, given the patterns that usually go with becoming a strat. And the reason is, is because I don't think that Momonosuke will ever become a straw hat pirate. Wait, what? Is Joy Boy trolling you right now? No fam, it all makes sense. I think that Momo will continue traveling with the strats, but not to become a straw hat pirate. In fact, I think that his role on the Stride crew will be very similar to Odin Kozuki's role on the Roger Pirate crew. It's basically stated that he wasn't really a member of that crew. In fact, he was more so a member of the Whitebeard Pirates. He was merely scouted from the Whitebeard Pirates to accompany Roger to travel to Raftal. And I speculated in a theory a very long time ago that the reason for this was for one, Odin discovering the true history, which is what he wanted to do, and Roger needed him because Roger did not have the ability to read and write the characters. Essentially, the note from Roger left on the Poneglyph in Skypea was written or carved by Odin Kozuki. And I think that there is some major purpose for actually writing down all of the various characters that are written on the Poneglyphs rather than just understanding their inherent meaning. But I think the point here is that Momonosuke has no intentions of becoming a pirate. He wants to become the Shogun of Wano, which at his current age is not something that he can really aspire to achieve. But he's not going to become a pirate, but he will want to continue traveling with the Strats. And so guys, let's bring this around full circle. Who will be the next Nakama? What are the fates of all the various candidates that we think could join the crew. More specifically, Carrot and Pedro. And something that Inurashi and Nekamamushi said solidify this in my mind. Yes, the Kozuki clan and the Mink race have since time immemorable vowed to share in each other's fates. And this ties along with the fact that Nekamamushi and Inurashi traveled with Odin both on the Whitebeard Pirates and the Roger Pirate ships. And they did so not as crew members, but rather as retainers of the Lord of the Kozuki. I don't think that Momonosuke is technically going to join the Strad crew. I don't think that Pedro or Carrot are technically going to join the Strad crew. If Momonosuke decides to travel with these strats, the Minx will share in his fate and send retainers to accompany him. And these retainers would be Pedro and Carrot. This would parallel Odin, Nekamumushi, and Inurashi with the Roger Pirates and the strats. But guys, all this being said here before we end this video, I do question one part of this theory. I think it could be right, but slightly wrong. And I will be making another theory video explaining my thoughts on this. And this theory video will be blasphemy. I will make it and people will rage. People will hate on me. But I think that some of the thoughts within that will be justified and will change the outcome which I just laid out to you guys here slightly. But anyway guys, that's all I really had to say today. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree or disagree and why. Share your thoughts. There will be a link to both Patreon as well as my Discord in the description. Uh, like the video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.